Yes, yes, you know the vibes. Welcome back. Welcome back to another video on my personal channel. It's been a while since we've done something like this, but it's that sort of season again where there's barely any topics to talk about. So you don't want to listen to me and Lawrence or Sadiq or Ian or anyone else just ramble on about random topics for an hour straight. So we're going to keep this one short and sweet for you guys today. We're going to be talking about the winners and the losers from Thomas Tuchel's first six games in charge as Chelsea manager. We're going to be delving into the positive positives are going to be delving into negatives as well and we're going to keep it short and sweet for you guys but before we start this video as usual I need to say if you guys haven't done so already smash the like button smash the subscribe button since the last time we did this video we've actually hit the road to 20k as well so we don't sleep here so it's now the road to 30k so guys if you haven't done so already smash the like button the subscribe button as well and if you guys want to see some nice track suits like this as well check out be inspired clothing the link is down in the description below check it out for the best in premium quality streetwear the link is down in the description below but before we go any further let's go straight into the video now let's go first winner on the Thomas Tuchel and to be honest I could say the Chelsea fans in general because we haven't lost our first six games under him we've won our last five we're back in the top four everything's looking good everything's looking rosy we all looking confident again but now we're going to keep this to players and I'm going to start with my personal favorite you already know who I'm going to start with on this one the Danish Maldini himself Andreas Christensen now this inclusion was more based on circumstance. He only really got back into the starting level when Thiago Silva came off injured against Spurs. Game-saving challenge from Thiago Silva as well. And we were all worried seeing our best centre-back come off injured. It was like literally our nightmares from the last three or four months all coming into reality. But Christensen's come in. And he's fitted in seamlessly. Granted, it's a position that suits him perfectly. Like, this is where he thrived under Antonio Conte as well in the middle of a back three back in 17-18 too. But we're still missing areas of Thiago Silva's game which Andreas Christensen can't compare to. His experience, his composure, his passing. Which, even though I rate Andreas Christensen's passing, Thiago Silva is next level in terms of his ability to pinpoint a pass 30, 40 yards deep. Even on ground passes as well, which is so hard to do. Thiago Silva makes it look easy. But you got to give Christensen his props as well. He's filled in a lot of the gaps that Thiago Silva left behind anyway. There's areas that he can't fill, but that's why Thiago Silva is one of the best centre-backs in the world right now. Christensen's come in though, and he's done his job superbly. He's got rid of a lot of the myths around his name as well. Christensen's weak. Christensen's a fairy. Christensen's poor with aerial duels. Christensen also has 75% plus of his aerial duels won this season. So he's doing a good job of dispelling all these myths as well. Granted, it hasn't been perfect for him. There's been little lapses of concentration here and there. I don't like to say he's weak. I like to say more that I think his balance needs improvement because I think that's where the problem is because I've seen him look so strong in the last few games, especially to the way he gets lambasted by half of the Chelsea fan base for being weak. He looks really stronger than people give him credit for. But I do think it's a case of balance. I do think sometimes if he is caught off balance, he, he really does struggle. That's why I could say he does need to improve on. But... He has had a brilliant last five games, especially with the way the last year and a half was looking for him as well. Like, Rudiger had a bad 19-20 season, but to be honest, so did Andreas Christensen as well. But it's all looking positive from him. I'm not too sure if he gets back into the starting lineup when Thiago Silva comes back into the team as well. I think there's a debate to be had over whether he could play on the left-hand side or the right-hand side too. Although I don't think Azpilicueta leaves it leaves the starting lineup either. So it's a question of Rudiger or Christensen as the other centre-back. But I think Christensen's just a bit more better technically as well. Which is why I'd prefer to push him into the back three as well. But we will have to wait and see. First winner in this video goes to Andreas Christensen. Our next loser, and I hate to call any of these guys losers because they're Chelsea anyway, but Kurt Zuma is our first loser on the list. And since recording this video, Kurt Zuma has only started one league game under Thomas Tuchel, which was the Barnsley game, which is a massive, massive fall from grace from him, where literally two or three months ago, he was our second best centre-back next to Thiago Silva. And he was racking up so many good numbers in terms of his individual performances. He was actually looking like one of the best centre centre-backs in the league as well but he's just massively fallen down the pecking order over the last few weeks and it hasn't really been explained why and the one thing I will say is this isn't a Thomas Tuchel thing specifically because this was happening on the Frank Lampard as well Frank Lampard in his final few weeks as Chelsea manager he was preferring Antonio Rudiger 
to Kurt Zuma as well. And I don't know if this is a thing where we're trying to raise the valuation fees of our Deadwood players and trying to get rid of them as well because this is the same similar thing that we did with Kepper as well for the Newcastle game where I was like, I don't get why he's starting. But the performances ain't been that bad either, so I'm not going to sit here and complain too much. But it's also a big question mark when you look at the ability that we have as well. In my opinion, I understand, because Kurt Zuma's ability on the ball is shaky. Like, for as good of a defender that he is, if you catch him in a press, it's peak for him, honestly. And I think everyone else can admit that as well. But same way, I say the same thing for Antonio Rudiger, so it's like, I don't really know how this makes sense, but it's cool, like, we've, we're have we unbeaten in our last six, I'm not going to sit here and start complaining on the video. The one thing I will say, though, is our aerial threat, both defensively and offensively, has gone down over the last month or so, and I think a huge reason for that is because Kurt Zuma is on the pitch. You know how, how much of a cheat code this guy is when it comes to corners. I think our our most consistent XG leading to goals this season was a Mason Mount corner to Kurt Zuma's head because he was that much of a cheat code. So I'd like to see him come back into the starting lineup. I think if we play a back two, he'll end up coming back into the starting lineup anyway. But it's a surprise to see him out for this long, especially with how promising he was looking the first few months of the season as well. Our next winner, or should we say winners, because this is a two-for-one special for this one, it is Jovacic, Jorginho and Kovacic. The beautiful partnership is back again, and the 2021 remontada is looking sweet. Both of these two, I can't lie, they look like two of our most lifeless midfielders under Frank Lampard, but they have been completely re-energised under Thomas Tuchel. And it's been a tale of two halves for the pair of them. Kovacic, for the most part of the first half of this season, he was looking better coming off the bench compared to when he was starting. There was a two decent games, well, two really good games in the middle of that against Leeds United and against Sheffield United as well. But other than that, it's been very inconsistent for him. And Jorginho, I'd say the same thing for him too. Start the season excellently, but since we started playing the 4-2-3-1 more prevalently against Southampton, against Manchester against Manchester United as well his form has just absolutely fallen off a cliff and we haven't really seen the best of Jorginho until literally Thomas Tuchel stepped through the door and then it was like a brand new Kovacic and Jorginho like I remember watching the Wolves game 24 hours after Frank Lampard got sacked and I was sitting there like raw is this you man yeah because I was sitting there and I was surprised like we saw Kovacic literally jogging around in the field in the middle third of the pitch for the last few weeks of Lampard's reign. He didn't look interested at all. And Jorginho, it looked more instructional for him because all he was doing was just passing sideways the entire time. Now I'm seeing Jorginho hitting brilliant forward passes like it's sorry ball season yet again. Mateo Kovacic literally playing like the player that won player of the season for Chelsea last season. They both look completely re-energised. The final passes have looked so good the last few games that's been a huge criticism that I've had of Mateo Kovacic and I still think there's a level that he can reach even higher than what he's doing right now but it's just showing how good these guys are Mateo Kovacic you shouldn't even bother pressing this guy there's literally no point he'll beat a three-man press with a simple pass a simple turn the shoulder and then he's driving forward 30 yards to the other side of the pitch second winners Jovacic it has to be it's been an excellent remontada from the pair of them our second loser and another player that has really struggled since Tuchel's joined and to be honest we could even say before Tuchel's joined as well it's Hakim Ziyech and since recording this, Ziyech has only started two games, the Wolves match and the Barnsley match. You lot can correct me in the comment section below if I'm wrong on that. And he struggled to compete in the attacking positions with Mason Mount, Timo Werner and Hudson Odoi for a starting 11 spot. The Barnsley game in particular was also just a massive howler by his standards. But it's not all to blame on Hakim Ziyech. I think a lot of it is in terms of his match sharpness and his fitness as well. He's been struggling with injuries since he's joined the club. And I think as well, if you go even further back to when he was at Ajax before he even joined us, their season ended early. As soon as we went into the first lockdown, the season was just locked off. And that meant Ziyech had about five or six months of no real match games to get sharp in. So I think there's, there's the stat that he's only played the equivalent of 11 first team matches 
or 14 first team matches in the space of 11 months and if you really look at it from that sort of perspective it's no surprise to see that Ziyech is coming into the lineups and he's not really having that much of an impact like there's been questions about whether he's a multi-dimensional player or if he's just a one-trick pony on his left foot but we've seen what he can do we've seen him win three man of the matches on the bounce in three successive games so it's not like this guy's a passenger he's shown that he has consistency and he's shown that he can do it in the case of 90 minutes his only thing is just getting that consistent game time from a longer span. Like, if you're talking about a 10-game period, a 15-game period, a 20-game period, that's where we're struggling with Hakim Ziyech. So overall, I don't think it's a case that we need to sell him. I think if we do sell him, it's going to be a case of the amount of players that we have on the squad anyway and someone just having to make room for it. And if that's the case, we're going to start looking at it from a more financial point of view. And from a more financial point of view, he was our cheapest attacker. If you take away the academy prospects as well, he was our cheapest attacker that we played for. That we paid for. So there's less of a chance of making a loss on him. So it could be Ziyech that sees the door. But there's plenty of time to wait before the end of the season. Ziyech just needs to get a good run of games under his belt, in my opinion. Our third winner, and if Mason Mount was Frank Lampard's son, then this guy is Thomas Tuchel's son. It is Callum Hudson Odoi. Thomas Tuchel literally came to Chelsea and instantly promoted Hudson Doyle into starting 11. And it was the things that we were screaming for in Frank Lampard's last few games as well. We know what the stats were saying. I think we only scored two league goals in our last four games. And Hudson Doyle was behind all of them despite only starting one of the last four. He was our most impactful attacker under Frank Lampard despite barely starting any games. And Tuchel must have already recognised that because the first thing he did put him straight back into the starting 11. And and he's looked absolutely ridiculous going forward he drives the ball into a box with such ease for someone of his age and the confidence that he has is a madness we've already spoken numerous times about Robbie Brady and Sean Dyche arguing on the touchline and Brady saying I literally cannot deal with this guy no matter what you try and tell me to do I can't handle this guy he moves too quick for me and that's what Hudson Doy can do and even when we played him out of position at right wing back or initially looked like out of position he's made it his own position because his work rate is tracking back and his defensive awareness has gone has got so much better over the last 18 months that I can credit Sari and Frank Lampard for as well because they've added that into his game slowly but he looks like a completely re-energized player under Frank Lampard and we've got to give him his flowers right now Callum hudson Doy, yet another winner our final winner and we're going to start on a positive we're going to end on a positive because that's literally the vibe that we're going through right now Marcus Alonso another winner under Thomas Tuchel and you all know I've already had my reservations about Marcus Alonso as a defender as a left back and even as a left wing back but I will give Thomas Tuchel his props because he's done a really good job of hiding Marcus Alonso's deficiencies and we've actually got a semi-competent player at left wing back as a result of that granted we have only faced teams that sit deep, which means we can play a lot more attacking options, but I'm not going to use that as a simple excuse for Alonso because I could use that as an excuse for all the winners over the last six games as well. I'll give Alonso his flowers where it's due. He's had a very good run of games as well. Chilwell hasn't been preferred because he's been out of form. I do think Chilwell is a higher ceiling than Alonso does still, but I understand why Marcus Alonso is playing too. His height makes it much better to Chilwell in terms of his, he can interplay with Timo Werner. Timo Werner can drop into left wing and then deliver a cross into the box of Marcus Alonso, who makes one of those inverted runs into the box. And that means he's had a lot more shots on goal, a lot more chances created, and we have a little bit more aerial threat in the final third as well. So I give Thomas Tuchel credit for that, and I give Alonso credit as well, because we'd all written him off, and he's come in and shown he can still provide something to the team. I'm not fully sold on him because there are still massive holes in his play as a player in general but the more we can hide it the more we can get the best out of Marcus Alonso and that's the same we can say for a lot of players as well but guys this is the end of the video today let me know if you guys enjoyed this video if you guys did smash the like and subscribe button check out Carefree Lewis G as well um, I should be doing a membership fee, fee thing on my channel as well so check that one out in the coming days let me know what other video types you guys want to see here and we will see you guys tomorrow for either another live another video i'm not even sure to be honest it just depends on what's out but there will be something out here tomorrow so guys check it out take care like and subscribe and as always up the chels